I will pick this world clean. Belveth, the newest champion, is ready to take over the rift. Welcome to this ultimate Belveth guide. It has everything you need. Tips, tricks, combos, power spikes, and even jungle mechanics to achieve your goal this season with Belveth, whether you're a newer player aiming to get out of Iron 4 or grinding to get Diamond for the first time. After testing items and runes from the best pro and solo queue players, I've put as much information in this guide to help you emulate their builds and gameplay. I'm Zeus, let's get straight into this guide and I'll show you how to dominate with Belveth, the nightmarish Empress of the Void. Just before we start, Belveth doesn't need energy or mana to use abilities. Her passive, Death in Lavender, has two parts. The first part increases her attack speed after using an ability. Each ability counts as two stacks, and she can hold onto six stacks in total, which is displayed under her health bar. Each basic attack consumes one stack. She is ghosted during this time, which means she can move through units like minions and champions. The second part permanently stacks attack speed any time she takes down a large monster like jungle camps, champions, or epic monsters like dragon and baron. And just recently changed, she can also gain stacks from cannon minions and super minions. The takedowns must be within 3 seconds, and this includes kills and assists. Jungle camps offer 1 stack of lavender, while champions and epic monsters count as 2. Her attack speed cap is increased to 10, however, basic attacks and their effects are reduced. Just to put this into perspective, almost all champions' attack speed is capped at 2.5, so Belveth has 4 times that. This passive increases her potential to scale infinitely, making her a late game threat. Because she needs large monsters to scale, Belveth is best played as a jungler. You don't need to take monsters to gain the stack, so if you want to give a blue to your teammate for example, make sure you damage the monster camp within 3 seconds and let them last hit it. You'll gain the stack and they'll get the blue. After testing a little, she needs around 200 stacks at level 18 to reach 6 attack speed, so any more than that is quite unrealistic. Here's a list of all the large and epic monsters that provide stacks. Epic monsters like Dragons, Barons and Herald will provide 2 stacks for the takedown and another stack for picking up the coral, so 3 in total. Her Q, Void Surge, allows Belveth to dash a fixed distance in 4 different directions, dealing 80 damage to enemies she passes through. The dash applies on hit effects and spell effects to the first enemy hit, but with reduced effectiveness. She has a cooldown for each direction she moves that scales with attack speed, and this will be displayed next to your health bar and with curses around Belveth. This ability deals more damage to jungle camps, again making her efficient at jungling. You cannot dash through walls with this Q until you have activated her ultimate, which I'll cover soon. This ability resets her auto attack, which means you can get 2 auto attacks quickly with a auto attack Q auto attack combo. Although it seems like you can go in only 4 separate directions, you can still pretty much move in the same direction twice, which makes it effective to catch enemies and escape. Try to imagine an invisible X Y axis. As long as you need to dash close to the X or Y axis, you can essentially move in that direction twice. The speed of the dash increases every time you level it, which is important for later stages of the game. It's an amazing mobility tool, making sure to time it so you can dodge enemy skill shots. This ability makes it easy to stack her passive bar to 6 stacks after 3 dashes. When clearing, try not to use abilities while you have 5 or 6 bars as you'll then be wasting stacks. The dash will only apply on hit effects, like red buff, to the first enemy hit, not multiple enemies. We'll be using her next ability to help us close even more distance and reset Q. Her W, above and below, deals AP damage, knocks up and slows all enemies in an area. Hitting a champion resets your Q cooldown in that direction. This will increase your chance to chase any fleeing enemies with the extra Q. This is amazing in teamfights if you land it on multiple enemies. Even though it deals AP damage, it does scale with AD. The slow increases every time you level up. If you hit 2 or more enemies with W, there's a chance you refresh Q in 2 different directions. This is more luck than aim, but it's handy to know it exists. Even though W doesn't have the longest range, you can still use it to check brushes or fog of war. It makes a different sound if it hits an enemy. Also, if you've already got Q in that direction and it resets after using W, there's an enemy in the brush or fog of war. 
per E, Royal Maelstrom, attacks the lowest HP enemy percentage-wise six or more times in 1.5 seconds. The number of attacks increases with attack speed and deals more based on the enemy's missing HP. During this time, Belveth gains damage reduction and life steal, but she cannot move. You can recast E to cancel half of it. Although it's an amazing cleanup ability that aims for low HP enemies, it's also the best way to survive and stay alive because of the insane lifesteal and damage reduction you gain. Can be interrupted by enemy heart CC, so time it after they've used their CC abilities in order to get the full duration. It even triggers runes like Conqueror and Lethal Tempo, leading to some insane clutch survivability and gaining stacks really fast. It will prioritize the lowest HP enemy as already mentioned, even minions, so avoid this while there are low HP minions around if you want to damage a champion. It will attack enemies in fog of war, brushes, and invisible targets. It will reveal the direction with the tiny spike animation pointing towards the hidden or invisible enemy. Use it to reduce damage whenever you need to tank a tower shot, then quickly Q to cancel and dash away. You can tank up to two tower shots if timed well. It's great at baiting enemies under your tower as enemies will try to finish you off, only to have their damage reduced. Even though enemies can cancel your ease damage with some of their hard CC, the damage reduction part will still be activated. Here's a list of summoner spells you can use while performing this ability. The most useful one in most cases is Smite. Flash will cancel this ability altogether anytime you use it. And finally, her ultimate, Endless Banquet, has a few parts. It's not too complicated, but it is a little long. The first part is a passive that applies a mark when Belveth auto attacks a target, dealing true damage every second attack. The stacks increase infinitely against the same target as long as it's within 5 seconds and refreshes after every attack. We can use this mark around enemies to expose champions who use clones. After you have marked the real champion, their clone won't have the mark, which means the marked champion is the real one. The second part of her passive creates a Void Coral which spawns in place of the dead target for 15 seconds. Anytime Belveth is part of a kill or assist against an enemy champion or epic monster, which again is a Baron, Dragon or Herald. Now comes the game changing part. Belveth dashes to the Void Coral and consumes it. Nearby enemies are slowed and then dealt true damage after it explodes. She also consumes any other Void Corals nearby and gains a stack of Lavender per Void Coral consumed. Belveth is now in her true form for 60 seconds. The timer is displayed under her health bar in purple. And just for clarity, you need to press R on the Void Coral, just clicking it won't activate it. During this dash and explosion, you aren't immune to damage, so be careful if you have to take the Coral under an enemy tower or next to multiple enemy threats. You'll also want to avoid taking some Corals if it gives another enemy time to get away. If there is a low HP enemy, just finish them off first instead of taking the coral further away. You can use this dash to pick up corals over walls. However, the dash distance isn't that long, so only thinner walls where enemies have died nearby. The coral lasts 15 seconds, so there's no need to rush to take it, especially if you're doing something that's more important. Just remember to come back and pick it up and you'll have true form for a longer time in total compared to if you were to pick it up straight away. Now, while in her true form, she gains bonus health, out of combat movement speed, attack range, and attack speed. She'll now be able to use her Q through terrain like walls and towers. If she consumes Void Corals during this true form, she'll refresh the 60 second duration and heal up a little bit. Dashing through walls can increase the range of Q, which means she can now dash over very thick walls, even if the indicator doesn't reach. Here's a few thick walls you can dash over. The best rule of thumb with Q dash to note is if you can flash over the wall, you can most likely dash over it. Now, if she consumed an enhanced Void Coral from Baron or Rift Herald, she will now gain true form for 183 seconds, which is three minutes. And now get ready for this. She will now spawn Void Remora for deaths of nearby enemy and ally lane minions. These deal slightly more damage than the minions it replaces, but they have less HP. They will behave like normal lane minions, attacking anything in their path. These minions can be also enhanced with the Baron buffs, making it a great way to siege and push in the enemy base. Remember to fight around these minions so they can help deal damage to enemy champions who are attacking you. Gaining this true form will open up opportunities to go for split push anytime you have these buffs, even for a late game backdoor. By the way, during the enhanced true form, 
If you pick up any corals before it ends, you will refresh this form for another minute. This means you can spawn Void Remora for much longer than three minutes. For clarity, if there are two corals nearby and one of them is the Enhanced True Form, you will gain the Enhanced True Form even if you pick up the other coral. So don't worry if you're not sure which one is the better coral to take. Ability Order Her Q is a bread and butter and should be leveled and maxed first. It's going to be your main way to clear camps, trade, gap close and escape. It even increases in speed every time you level it. Your E should be maxed second for the increased stats and reduced cooldown, although the damage reduction does not change. Finally, max W, as it will be used mostly for knock-up utility, which is always 0.75 seconds, but it does have some AD scaling. And max your ultimate whenever you can, which is at level 6, 11, and 16. In terms of the first three levels, you'll almost always want to level Q first, since it's best for taking camps and even invades, where you can catch and damage enemies or use it to escape. W could be useful for invades as well, if you have enough damage on your team, and your team lacks that CC early to knock someone up and slow them. There are two major runes taken, both from the Precision Tree. Conqueror. With all her attack speed bonuses, Belveth has an easy time stacking this very quickly. It even stacks during your Eve Royal Maelstrom, which means you are guaranteed to get the full 12 stacks in 1.5 seconds. Lethal Tempo. This major rune scales incredibly well and you'll have a solid late game. The extra range bonus feels quite good on Belveth as you'll attack enemies slightly further away. With a full duration E, she will stack 6 stacks of lethal tempo and it will stack even faster as you gain more attack speed. Press the attack. There is some viability in this rune since Belveth can quickly proc it and even teammates damage will be increased but the two previous runes are more optimal. As for minor runes from Precision, you'll want to take Triumph for some extra healing after takedowns and some extra gold. Legend Alacrity is perfect to complement her with more attack speed with Champion and Monster kills. Legend Tenacity can be viable against heavy CC teams. Even Legend Bloodline can work and you might want to take this if you don't plan on buying any other lifesteal items. She does already have plenty of lifesteal from her E so she doesn't need to rely on Bloodline for the healing. Finally, any of the last minor runes can be viable. Against squishy teams, Coup de Gras works great and you'll start shredding anything below 40% HP. Cutdown is perfect for tanky team comps stacking HP. And Last Stand synergizes very well with her playstyle, especially without her ultimate. And you'll find you'll get pretty low HP in those very close duels before you use your E to damage reduce and sustain. As for second pages, there's a few options worth considering. For a great utility option, go with Inspiration. Magical footwear is very efficient considering you can skip on boots early with the amount of mobility you have on Q, and plus you have potential to unlock boots even faster than the 12 minute mark with takedowns. Cosmic Insight provides some great spell and item haste, and you'll make great use of this throughout the entire game, especially with items like Immortal Shield Bow or Blade of the Ruined King. If you're looking for an aggressive page, pick Domination. Take Sudden Impact for Lethality, which will be activated every time you use your Q or Ultimate Dash. And if you want to focus on roaming, take Relentless Hunter for extra out of combat movement speed. Treasure Hunter can be viable against team comps you can aim to kill early, usually enemies who are easy to gank or you have a really good lane setup with your teammates. Although Belveth gains tanky stats from her true form ultimate, if you're looking for a more defensive page, pick Resolve. Take Bone Plating to tank enemy team combos and reduce their damage. Revitalize works really well with her E and you'll have some strong healing However, unflinching seems to be more consistent as tenacity really helps Velveth stay active in fights and output damage through auto attacks. Conditioning is another rune worth taking if you need some defensive stats. If you're going to farm most of the early game anyway, then you'll have the extra stats for after 12 minutes. Starting items. Hailblade plus refillable potion. Because of a dueling playstyle, you want to start with Hailblade so you can activate challenging smite after 5 smites. This smite will burn while Belveth is fighting, providing extra true damage and reducing the enemy's damage. Some components worth mentioning. Noon Quiver, one of the main components you'll want to purchase that leads into your Mythic. Pickaxe, if you haven't got enough to finish Noon Quiver, pick up this for a nice AD power spike, only if you're going Kraken Slayer. Vampiric Scepter, for some bonus life stolen AD that builds into your Immortal Shield Bow or Blade of the Ruined King. Boots of Speed, Great for a quick 300 gold purchase, however, this won't be an option if you've picked up Magical Footwear Rune. Mythic Options Kraken Slayer Since it deals true damage on every third attack, Kraken synergizes well with Belveth's kit, 
helping us shred through anything in range. Our attack speed passive allows us to get in so many allows us to get in so many true damage attacks. Even your E can activate the true damage multiple times. You want this in most cases, considering team comps usually have at least one or two tanks, and you want the true damage to shred through any armor items. As long as you can consistently output damage, this is the best option. And finally, the mythic passive will provide attack speed per legendary item you finish, which is perfect for Belveth. Immortal Shield Bow. This is a safer option and is mostly used to counter any threats that have a good chance of bursting you, even through your E's reduced damage. This means it's best against squishier team comps, as you won't need to rely on the true damage that Kraken Slayer provides. The life still is great for sustain, however, you can always go with Kraken and then pick up legendary items later on for sustain. If you're going with Shield Bow, consider if you need any more life still from the legendary items. Frostfire Gauntlet. Although really taken, this has potential to be viable, especially if your team needs a tank against multiple threats. Obviously, you'll be lacking in damage compared to the previous two mythics, but you'll have much more survivability. Belvest scales in damage with her passive and ultimate, so over extended fights, you'll still be able to deal plenty of damage. Rarely recommended, but might be game changing if your team really needs a tank. Legendary options. Blade of the Ruin King. Once again, relying on Belveth's amazing attack speed, we can pick up this item to help shred anything in her way, dealing percentage HP damage. It provides a useful movement speed passive after three auto attacks, helping Belveth chase and kite enemies while dealing damage. While they're slowed, you can use it to hit W easier or have them stay longer in your E range. The sustain is another bonus worth considering, especially if you've taken Kraken Slayer. Death Stance. Usually bought as a third item, it provides Belveth with some much needed defensive bonuses, helping her get in the middle of a few enemies and take a large portion of the damage she's received over time. With her potential to snowball fights after a takedown, she'll then restore any damage taken and be able to finish off and clean up enemies left. This is most effective against AD threats. Wit's End When it comes to mostly AP threats, you want to consider Wit's End instead of Death Stance for the magic resist. It provides great offensive stats, so you won't fall behind in damage, increasing your on-hit damage. Gwinsu's Rage Blade. Considering we won't be relying on the critical damage from our Mythics, Kraken Slayer and Immortal Shield Bow, we can pick up this item, transferring that critical damage to some extra plain physical damage. Once again, the attack speed from this item helps Belveth potential increase even more. Just to note, Gwinsu's Rage Blade will not apply Kraken's true damage auto twice. Bloodthirster. Another offensive item with great defensive potential with the shield and life still it provides. This will work best in team comps where you can consistently put out damage and sustain through those extended fights. Against heavy CC or burst threats, you want to go with a more defensive option I'll mention soon. Mortal Reminder. When up against heavy healing comps, you should prioritize a healing reduction item. You could always just finish the Executioner's Calling and finish this last. Spirit Visage. A solid defensive option, and Belveth will make great use of the increased healing passive through her lifesteal items and her E ability. Best against multiple AP threats. Guardian Angel. This should be purchased either as a last item or before a very important game changing fire. You can always pick up a stopwatch first and then just finish this item once you've turned it into a broken stopwatch. All other healing reduction items you can purchase are worth considering as well, like Chempunk Chainsword and even Thornmail. Boots will be mostly a situational choice. Plated steel caps. Against heavy AD and auto attacking threats, you want these boots, and you can always rush them earlier before you complete your mythic. Mercury's treads. The perfect item to counter multiple CC and AP threats. Remember with enough enemy CC, you'll simply be unable to output optimal damage and lose all potential to carry games, therefore this could be a lifesaver. Berserker's Graves. A boot mention that you should rarely consider, seeing as these previous two boots cover 90% of games. If you don't have any real threats and just need to deal more damage, then this extra attack speed will give you the power spike you need. Boots of Swiftness. A final boot mention that you should rarely consider. But if slows are your main type of CC threat, then these can work. Just be aware you'll once again be much squishier compared to the first two boots. As for shards, you want to pick up the attack speed shard first then Adaptive Shard as your second. The third shard is Situational, so pick Armor against any AD Jungler or AD Lane Threats, and MR for AP Junglers or AP Lane Threats. Armor is usually best in most cases anyway, since you'll be using a lot to tank damage from Jungle Camps. Summoner Spells. 
regular smite into challenging smite. As a jungler, you'll always have to take this as it's necessary to clear and take objectives. You'll specifically want to pick up Ember Fire first, which means you'll have challenging smite after five smites. The dueling benefits this provides is important as enemies will do reduce damage and you'll burn them over time with true damage. Chilling Smite. This is viable if you really need to stick to extra sleepy champions with the slow it provides. However, we can always make up for it with our items and the next summoner spells we choose. Now whether to go flash or ghost, both offer ways for us to get into fights and escape. However, depending on certain enemies and team comps, they should be taken for different reasons. Flash, best taken against squishier and more mobile champions. You also have the increased chance to flash defensively out of tight situations or having to dodge certain important enemy skill shots. Ghost, this becomes the ideal option to kite and chase enemies over longer distances, usually tankier champs without that much mobility. Belveth's fighting style means she has to output damage over time while moving, so this will be essential against champions who take longer to kill. Very few enemies can get away from Belveth with Ghost in her true form. You can use Ghost a few seconds early to get into a fight faster as well. It resets after a takedown, making it great to snowball fights. A few interactions worth noting. Q auto attack reset. Belveth's Q resets her basic attack timer, which means you can auto attack, use Q to reset her auto, then instantly auto attack again. Make sure you build up the muscle memory for this, as it will ensure you deal optimal damage. You don't want to cancel your auto attack with Q. The dash speed will increase as you level it, so it will feel smoother as the game goes on. Q dash notes. Your Q will do about the same damage as your auto attacks. Before you finish your Kraken Slayer, you should be relying on damage from Q. However, after Kraken, you should use Q more for positioning so you can output damage through auto attacks. Of course, you should always aim to use Q through enemies if you can. Q next to walls. Your Q always moves a set distance, however, next to walls, she can cancel the animation and perform an auto attack quicker. So therefore use walls when you can, especially when taking jungle camps. In true form, you can only use this on thicker walls though, or you'll just dash over and it could ruin your combo. Combo damage mentioned before we start. In terms of combos, Bell's Veth damage comes mainly from her auto attacks and E, so her other abilities should be more for positioning and setting yourself up, in order to get out as many auto attacks as possible, utilizing her passive attack speed. However, with that said, there's still some combos you can use. Try to be as flexible as possible since most enemies will move differently and have different abilities you need to dodge with Q. Basic ability combos, the Q trade. Q auto attack, and then times that however many times you may need it up to four. You wanna Q through the enemy for damage or use it to close distance and instantly follow up with auto attack. You can repeat this three more times against enemies that are fighting you on the spot. This combo gets faster the more points you have in Q. Q trade with attack speed. This time you want to Q and then auto attack twice, and then you can times this by however many times. This time, with more attack speed, you can get in two auto attacks before your next Q. Use as many Q auto attacks as your enemy allows you to. The catch up combo. Q, Q, W, Q. You want to Q twice in the same direction or the closest towards the fleeing enemy. You'll then look to land W, which will knock them up, slow them, and reset your Q for another Q dash. This combo closes an insane amount of distance with three Q dashes in total, so it's best to chase low HP enemies. It's even more effective once your ultimate is active, as you can now dash through walls and you'll have out of combat movement speed. By the way, you can also use this as a test combo. After dashing in, if W lands continue forward, if it misses, just Q dash back once or twice for safety. Q combo trade. Q auto attack, W auto attack, Q, auto attack, E. You can use Q at the end to back off after the trade or use the other Qs to continue trading. You'll be using E ability last because it does more damage the lower HP enemies have. Again, you can get away at the end of this combo with Q or keep on top of the enemy while auto attacking with all the passive stacks you have. Quick safe poke, Q, W, E, Q. You'll be using the first Q to get in W range then use E instantly. Enemies will be knocked up and slowed, so they may take the full duration of E. Use Q to then get away safely. Flash combos. The Q flash. You can Q and then flash, and it will damage enemies you flash onto. Use it to extend the range of Q, making sure to flash right at the end of the animation. 
If you do it too early, you won't really extend the range, nor can you redirect it. However, the long cooldown of Flash makes this combo only useful in very clutch situations. But still, it's important to know it exists. It's also important to note that you can cancel the damage of Q by flashing during the animation. Flash W. Use this to catch enemies further away using Flash to gap close. W and then Flash does not cancel animation or extend the range. W Flash on multiple enemies. We mentioned earlier in abilities that you could reset more than one Q stack by landing W on two enemies in different directions. It's even possible to reset all four Qs with a W Flash on multiple enemies all around you. This is incredibly rare to execute during a real game, but it's interesting to note. Flash E Cancel. You can cancel E at any time with Flash. Not very useful, but again it's important to know it exists as you don't want to cancel it unintentionally. Item Mentions. Stopwatch. Because there's a chance you'll be purchasing Guardian Angel, there's a good chance you'll have Stopwatch available to use. Apart from it being a great item to survive and bait enemies, there's a few interactions to note. Q Stopwatch. You'll keep traveling and damage enemies while in the safety of your stopwatch. W Stopwatch. You'll send out your W, knocking up and damaging enemies while in the safety of stopwatch. E Stopwatch. Stopwatch will cancel your E. You'll almost never want to use this combo since E is your main ability to survive and reduce damage. However, using it right at the end of E animation when enemies think they can kill you is very effective. R Stopwatch. Stopwatch will cancel your R dash and you won't pick up your coral. You also won't be able to use Stopwatch during the animation and explosion. Unique Interactions. Once you have over 1.8 attack speed, Belveth changes her attack animation to a more stabbing motion. This feels a lot smoother, but isn't that important to know. E Cancel. We mentioned you could cancel E by pressing it again after 0.75 seconds, which is half its duration. You can actually cancel it faster with Q, W, or even R instantly. However, since E is such an important ability, you really want to cancel it, but again, important to know it exists, perhaps if an enemy is running away out of your E range already. Very high attack speed. After about 3.5 to 4 attack speed, you should just click an enemy and forget trying to click and move. It's extremely fast for most players, especially after 5 attack speed, to keep up and properly kite, so just let Belveth's insane attack speed do the job. Just use Q to catch up and stay within auto attack range. If you try to attack move at this insane speed, you will lose damage. Taking Tower Combo Use your abilities to charge up your bar for faster auto attacks, helping you take towers faster. Use the Q against walls technique to cancel the dash animation and get auto attacks out even faster. In true form, you'll just dash through the tower, but you'll have high attack speed anyway from your ultimate passive stats. Use your W and E to take surrounding minions while auto attacking the tower. You can even cancel your E to get in more auto attacks quicker. So let's go over some efficient clearing tips. So here's some quick tips for each ability. Your passive. As mentioned earlier, you won't want to use abilities with five or more bars, otherwise you'll lose some passive stacks. Q. Use it through as many enemies as possible. You always want to take this first for clearing. Position yourself while kiting the camps so you can Q through camps. During the early game, you want to Q auto and then Q auto again. With more attack speed, maybe over 1.8 attack speed, or if you finish Kraken Slayer or Shield Bow, you can then Q and auto twice before your next Q. W. Use it on as many enemies as possible again. Time the knockup to cancel the auto attack from monsters. You want to put a point in W at level 3. You can even use the W slow to kite camps if you want to take a little bit less damage. E. Great to tank 1 or 2 hits and heal yourself up. This is best taken at level 2 for faster clearing speeds and better for sustain. You also can time this as soon as the camp is going to attack you, so you can reduce as many attacks as possible. Her ultimate. Once you've taken true form, use Q through walls to get to camps faster. Now quick individual camp tips. Raptors. You actually don't need to auto attack the small raptors even at level 1 if you Q through all of them 4 times. Wolves. You don't need to auto attack the small wolves either, as W and Q will kill them eventually. Krugs. You can leave all the smallest Krugs at the end and save W, then kill them all as long as you're kiting. You can also use Q through them, but you'll need the correct direction to path efficiently. All single camps, red, blue, and grump. 
Just use all the tips as mentioned and make sure to path to the next camp as you're killing it. Rift Herald. Save at least one Q to quickly dash behind Herald as soon as they open their eye behind them for the burst of damage. Baron. Try to get another melee champion, preferably a tank, to take the Baron aggro as a debuff will make you do a lot less damage. However, in solo queue, not everyone knows this so you may end up tanking it anyway. Rift Herald, Dragon or Baron mention. Go for the game changing smite steals in true form. Use your Q dash over the walls to try and smite steal these camps when you can and then dash back over to safety. A Scuttle Crab. Use W first to remove the shield and then use the other abilities and auto attacks. Use Smite first to break the shield if W is on cooldown and you're in a rush, but be careful if the enemy jungler is nearby. Jungle Paths. Belveth is able to clear her first camps without the need of a leash no matter which side of the map or jungle camp you start. This can allow both your top and bot lanes to have priority early, and it might confuse enemies as they won't be too sure which side you started, leading to more pressure early on. I'll go over three example clears. They don't require leashes and should be practiced a few times for the efficient timing and the important mechanics you pick up. However, if your lanes insist on helping, that will increase your clear speed. You can choose your path based on which jungler you're up against and what lane you plan to gank or hover around first. If you're unsure, just pick the most comfortable pathing. These three clears can be done on either side of the map, whether you start at the bottom of the map, which is blue side, or the top, which is red side. Your first clear. This is the fastest full clear to level four. The first Q direction should be used in the east-west direction, aka bottom right. This will be the most important, so you can use it first when you have to take both Gromp and Blue buff at the same time. Your first smite should be used on Gromp from a distance, so it comes towards you. If this is too hard for now, just do them individually, but you'll have to take one less camp before Scuttle. Then you want to level E second after killing the blue buff and use it instantly to get some health back and finish off Gromp. Continue the path in using the tips as mentioned before. Remember to path towards your next camp just as the camp you're taking is getting close to dying. Try to let the burn from your jungle item finish them off. If you fall behind in your clear or just want to prioritize Scuttle first before the enemy jungler, go to the Scuttle before you take the Krugs and smite the Scuttle if you have to. A second clear. This is starting with the red buff. Getting a leash at red will be faster, but again, it's not necessary. You can take W at level two here and use it on the smallest Krugs, clearing four to six in one go. You want to take blue and Gromp at the same time, but only after you have chunked blue to about a third of its HP. It might seem like you get close to dying here, but the HP you gain from Gromp will keep you healthy and you'll now be level four. Again, if you fall behind in your clear or just want to prioritize Scuttle first before the enemy jungler, just go to Scuttle before you take Gromp. A third clear worth mentioning, similar to the red buff start, However, you'll be starting with Raptors, Krugs, and then go to Red Buff. This is about the same speed, but this time your Raptors will respawn quicker, so it's best if you intend to clear even more camps after your first rotation, and you'll have the Red Buff activated a little longer. This is usually fine to do when you expect a quiet early game with little jungle pressure and scaling lanes. Just start with Raptors, using Q through all the Raptors, doing this four times. No need to auto attack the small Raptors as mentioned earlier. You might even want to Q auto attack twice and let the burn do its job on the smaller raptors. Then move on to Krugs. The final smallest Krugs can be done as you're taking a red buff as they'll move towards you and can be finished off with a single Q. Now even though these are great clears to practice for the mechanics, in a real game anything can happen so adapting is always best. If you get invaded you need a backup plan, whether it's to fight, ping for assistance or invade the enemy's jungle. If you see a chance to pick up two easy kills in the bot lane at level two, then just go prioritize the kills. Perhaps you want to gank early and even invade. Always adapt. Guarding early. Get the ward trinket first and place it early, around the one minute mark, in the river. Whichever side you think you might be counter jungled. So if I'm playing on red side, starting blue buff, I'll place it on the top side river dot brush because I'm predicting a Lee Sin will try to fight me at my red. Then continue to base and swap it out for a sweeper's lens. You should get to your jungle cap just in time for the spawn. At level one, right at the start of the game, with your Q, you can go pretty deep toward the enemy jungle, so you can see which side they start. Use your two Qs to back out if the enemies try to collapse on you. In terms of gank strategies, you almost always want a Q dash in to close the distance, then go for W, so then you have another Q dash to get even closer. 
Otherwise, if you were to use just W straight away, you're potentially wasting a free Q. However, if enemies are perhaps walking towards you, you could still use W first to knock them up for a guaranteed hit. In true form, your ganks become more efficient and deceiving as you can come from behind walls, whether it's mid lane, top or bottom. This will surprise enemies and you will avoid pathing over the main warded areas. A quick last tip, if you kill the dragon or enemy champion while you're level 5 and then level up, it won't drop a coral. Early laning phase. Look for invades if your team is ready. You have plenty of mobility and damage with your Q, or if your team has enough damage, use W for CC. If you have any threatening jungle matchups like Lee Sin or Graves, try to ward the opposite side you start with your Trinket Ward and place it around the 55 second mark. Then recall instantly and pick up sweepers. This ward will let you know if enemies are planning to invade, in which case you can either ping your team to help or head towards the enemy's other side of the jungle. Your main goal in early game is to focus on clearing and stacking your lavender passive. Practice a few jungle paths for efficient clearing. After a full clear, look to fight for Scuttle Crab if you have even or dominating lanes, otherwise you may want to recall and head to the opposite Scuttle Crab. Ganking isn't Belveth's biggest strength, especially without your true form, but it's still very solid if you land your W knockup. If you have lanes with CC, then you'll increase your chance of getting a kill or at least burning some summoner spells. Look more for counter ganks or even invade the enemy jungle if you see them on the opposite side of the map or you're ready for a fight. Again, you'll always want to focus on taking camps unless there's no camps to take and lanes are easily ganked. For example, enemies are pushed in and they have no summoner spells. You'll also want to look for experience and gold from lane minions if your laner has died. In skirmishes, it's a good idea to tank most of the aggro using your E. You can mitigate plenty of damage and have your laner output damage safely. You also have plenty of dashes to stall, dodge and escape, so you can bait way more than most champions early game. After 6, you should prioritize dragons for their buffs, but also as a way to get your true form. You can solo most dragons if you need to, with the small exception of the Cloud Drake, in which you should always start at full health. Finally, always keep an eye out for Rift Herald, as you now have a chance to pick up your Enhanced Void Coral Bonus true form. When you pick up this bonus form, look for lanes that you can gank. Even if you don't kill the enemy, try to force them back at low HP, so then you can use the Herald to push and pick up Tower Platings. Your Void Remora minions will also help you push. Enemies will struggle to clear this alone. Mid game is when Belveth really starts to come online. After completing your Mythic plus one or two legendary items, you'll start to shred enemies who 1v1 you. A good aim is to have around 50 stacks at around 15 to 20 minutes, but that can depend on a few factors. You should still continue farming at this stage. However, objectives like Baron and Dragons are top priority, so prepare for skirmishes and teamfights around these areas. You have great potential to steal objectives with your true form over walls by Q dashing in, then W E smite. Remember you can use smite during E. Once you perform this, even whether you get the Baron or not, then try to Q dash back over the wall for safety. Look to siege if you have herald or Baron buff. Utilize your Void Remora minions when you can. You have great dive potential, especially with your E to tank tower shots and Q dash away. Since she has great mobility, especially with her true form, Look to make picks and catch enemies, dashing through walls and landing W on vulnerable targets. Catching one, simply catching one enemy can really open up the game. And will give you an advantage if you're able to then start a team fight 5v4. If you're ahead, take over the enemy jungle and start taking their camps. You'll be denying them golden experience to come back while stacking your passive. If your team isn't doing too well in team fights and you don't think the next one's gonna go in your favor, you should attempt to split push. Your mobility means you can escape enemies and look to duel anyone who comes to stop you. In some cases, you can even 1v2 or more, especially with a large minion wave stacked. You'll take towers extremely fast at this stage with your attack speed. However, as a jungler, make sure to split push the side closest to the Baron unless it's already been taken, as you don't want enemies to get it for free. Same case if there's a Soul Dragon or Elder Dragon to contest. If you've fallen behind and the enemy is close to taking your base, Farming super minions after your inhibitors are down will help stack your passive as well, so it's extremely important to never give up with a scaling champ like Belveth. As long as you prolong the game, you'll increase your chance to make it to the very important late game. Late game is Belveth's true time to shine and dominate. You'll shred through any tank and pop any squishy. A good aim is to have over 100 stacks. 
With good itemization, you'll do plenty of damage, but have one or two defensive options to survive most threats. You'll play mostly the same as mid-game, however, you'll be grouped up a lot more with your team. Sieging is very important if you have Baron buff. Look to dive, especially if you have a stopwatch or guardian angel completed. You'll be hard to kill even under towers with your E. And you never want to stop farming with Belveth. Look to take camps as much as you can, and you'll take them extremely fast at this stage. Look for cannon and super minions to clear as well. Objectives like Elder and Baron are your main priorities. Your team will depend on you to smite them. You don't exactly have the best smite combo out there, but an auto attack Q smite is a smooth combo to deal a quick chunk of damage. These areas where most team fights will happen, so approach them carefully. I'll go over strategies and tips for team fights right after this. If you aren't confident that there's a better smite jungler out there like Lee Sin or maybe Kha'Zix, just ping your team back or if those junglers try to smite steal it, make sure you ping these junglers and try to kill them before they can take it. By the way, with 3 items you can solo the Baron on your own anytime you have the chance and enemies have their guard down. Your E should keep you healthy while doing Baron and your auto attacks as well as your auto attacks as long as you have life steal from items like Blade of the Ruined King. Split push could be your only ticket to a win if team fighting isn't going your way. With your insane attack speed and dual potential, force a split push and go for a late game backdoor to win the game, or even force enemies to come and deal with you, so hopefully your team can pick up objectives of their own. You can still look to make picks with your team using QW, especially over walls with your true form. Team fighting. Adapting to the enemy team comp is important when team fighting with Belle Veth. She does plenty of damage through auto attacks and E, however, it's all single target damage. Therefore, positioning is incredibly important, not only for your damage output, but for survivability, considering you'll be prioritizing damage focused items early on. It also depends on whether you have true form. In order to snowball fights, you either need to have true form already, or burst down a target to get a coral ready. Without true form, you'll be squishier and have less damage. Therefore, it's essential that you play it a lot safer and wait for your time to dash in. Look for any assist you can be a part of, so you can then dash onto a coral and enter your true form. Although this is usually hard to set up, take your coral whenever enemies are bunched up for the AoE damage and slow. Aim to attack the closest enemies first. You'll be effective at shredding tanks with 2-3 items, so just play it calmly, attacking any tanks that get close to your ranged carries. You have great survivability tool with your E, anytime you get low and are focused. By reducing damage and life stealing, you can soak up plenty of pressure from enemies while allowing your team to safely output damage. You have decent engage potential. Use your QW combo to see if you land a W, especially on multiple enemies, which can then help other teammates land their ability. Just Q dash back if you miss it. In fact, you should try to constantly dash in and out to bait important enemy abilities, which can then give your team a good opportunity to engage. Don't be afraid to even sneak behind enemies and try to kill the backline if you see an opportunity. You aren't exactly a pure assassin, but you have the damage mobility and enough CC to do the job. Bell Veth does great cleaning up fights. Once one or two champs are dead, this is your time to start chasing and picking up corals. Chase enemies over wall with your QWQ combos. So you're interested in learning Bell Veth, but aren't sure if she's worth investing time on. Let's first go over strengths, basically reasons you want to play Bell Veth over other champions, then we'll cover weaknesses to consider and mention some quick solutions. Strengths Strong Dueling With plenty of attack speed from a passive, spammable Q ability that provides dashes and damage, and insane damage reduction and heal from E, she's got everything it takes to pop any squishies that get too close and shred any tanks that stay in her auto attack range. Insane Scaling Her passive and true form will allow her to dominate the later stages of a game reaching an insane 10 attack speed cap, 4 times most champions attack speed. Decent mobility. With 4 dashes from Q and a dash from her ultimate, she can chase, escape and dodge almost anything. This is especially true when she's in her true form, where she can now, where she can now Q dash through terrain like walls and towers. Flexible builds. Depending on how the game is unfolding, you can pick and choose what items you want to prioritize. Is there an AD threat who is fed? Pick up some armor items like mentioned in the builds. Are you snowballing and able to kill everything in sight? Pick up some of the high damage options mentioned. Split push plus siege. 
with insane attack speed at later stages of the game, and a unique ultimate passive which creates Void Remoras to create your own army of minions, you will shred all towers and inhibs if you aren't dealt with. Anytime enemies have their guard down, go for that late game backdoor. Weaknesses Weak early game Since she needs stacks and her true form ultimate to reach her power spike, she'll be lackluster until she reaches this stage of the game, usually the end of early which is usually the end of early game and the start of mid game, where there'll be more opportunities to pick up a dragon or herald. As a jungler, a safe start to protect your jungle is toward the opposite side you start on, with the trinket ward at 55 seconds, then recall. Then pick up sweeper's lens. You'll now have one side of your jungle covered if there's an invade. If you're confident your laners are strong and will help you join the fight, ping them and try to collapse on the enemy jungler invading you. Otherwise, look to take the enemy's jungle camps on the opposite side. You'll stay even in farm this way. Squishy without her ultimate. Her ultimate offers tanky stats and ways to escape, and so she can afford building damage early on. This means she can be quite vulnerable until she either picks up a void coral from a takedown or purchase tanky legendaries later on. If you're struggling to get kills to pick up true form, you should always look to take either Herald, Baron, or Dragon. Even if the enemy jungler is taking Herald, which most junglers will try to do, especially against someone like Belveth, pick up the dragon instead. With true form now, your fighting, clearing, and gank potential is so much better. If you're struggling against a certain champ, check the build section for items that provide tanky stats. Lacks reliable CC. Her W is a main form of CC, as well as the slow from her ultimate explosion, which is not so reliable. Both of these are telegraphed and easy to dodge. This makes positioning and knowing your limits extremely important. Usually getting closer with Q makes landing W much easier. If you're ganking a teammate with CC, you can wait for them to land theirs first. Even if it's a slow, then follow up with your W. Red buff and Blade of the Ruined King are great as well, using their slow first, then aiming for W. Mobile Champions Not only will mobile champions be difficult to auto attack since they rarely stay in one place, mobile champs have an easy time dodging your W knockup and getting out of your E range. You're quite mobile yourself in true form, so a good rule of thumb is to only dual mobile enemies if you have true form, otherwise it may be too hard to get close and you'll get kited easily. You'll have to play against mobile champs a lot more reactionary, waiting for enemies to use their abilities first instead of engaging yourself. Patience is the key to mobile champions. Relies on stacks and takedowns. Her scaling is insane if she's able to keep up with stacks from monsters and champions. Falling behind after invades or even having a team that lacks pressure in lane means you'll have a hard time dominating in fights until you're able to get that first void coral and reach your true form. Obviously farming as much as you can is the main solution to stay relevant. However, takedowns offer just as many, if not more stacks to gain from champions. Aim to gank lanes with the greatest CC or damage threats on your team. You'll have to rely on yourself sometimes, so look for solo dragons and heralds after 6 if the chance arises. Unless her passive changes dramatically, she'll always be most efficient as a jungler because of her insane potential to increase attack speed with jungle camps. However, she's definitely viable in top or mid if played carefully, since we're able to gain a few stacks from large minions, which include cannon and super minions. In terms of builds, you can pick from the Conqueror and Lethal Tempo, using any of the items and runes mentioned. You could perhaps rush Blade of the Ruined King, picking up a Vampiric Scepter early for the sustain it provides. Just like most melee champions, trades and avoiding too much damage from poke, especially mid, especially when you're playing mid, are essential to make sure you have solid laning phase. Her Q mobility and E sustain makes her surprisingly effective in top and mid. The only drawback is against long poke champs, especially who can peel you off. You'll have to rely on your dodging skills with Q to avoid taking too much poke. Teleport becomes a safer choice for laning, as you can recover and purchase items to help with tougher laning phases. It will become a central summoner spell while you're split pushing, especially after 14 minutes with the Unleashed Teleport, where you can join your team anytime you're side laning or split pushing. You'll benefit from taking Herald, Dragon, and Barons with your jungler anytime your team is grouped. Remember, you don't need to smite or finish off the camp to get the stack, so help your jungler anytime with camps to gain some free stacks, just don't fall behind with your farm. Use Q to dodge enemy skill shots. This ability makes you so slippery, which means you're very hard to gank as long as you have a few Q dashes ready. Use it to dodge and go aggressive when you can. 
you'll be even more agile when you have your true form, using it over walls around the river and alcove. W should be used to trade with the QWQ combo, and then use Q to back off to safety so you don't take too much minion damage and counter damage from the champion. W is your best ability to set up for your jungler. A good strategy is to have the wave pushed in and try to freeze just outside your tower. Not only will this make it easier for your jungler to gank, it will allow you to go for longer trades because you have more distance to chase the enemy down. You'll struggle killing or even chunking enemies if they're always under their tower. Use E for harder trades, and it's best used at the end of your combos for the increased damage the lower HP they have. But if you're ever going to take a bunch of unavoidable damage, for example, Syndra's ultimate, use E simply for the damage reduction. E is also great to set up for your jungler because of its amazing baiting potential making enemies believe they almost have you killed, only for you to then survive and have your jungler come in. She has decent roam potential as well with solid ganks. You can usually use one or two Qs early while traveling to a lane, and it will usually be back up once you arrive to that lane. With true form, the out of combat movement speed makes roaming much more efficient. If you've killed your laner or they've roamed, then you usually can follow their roams, or you can push in your waves and start taking towers. With attack speed from a passive, she can take towers very fast. This is amplified when you have your enhanced true form, as you'll now shred all towers with Void Remora, your auto attacks, and Herald as well. This will be almost impossible for them to defend with a single enemy, so they usually have their jungler come too. Look to farm enemy jungle camps or even scuttle crabs when it's free. Skirmishes with your jungler are great, using tips already mentioned in teamfights, like dodging abilities with your Q, and soaking enemy damages with your E as well as trying to synergize your CC with W. You can take some of your jungler's camps like raptors, but it's best to either ask or just take it when you risk losing the camp to the enemy jungler. Hope you enjoyed the guide. For those of you that want a full text version of this guide, check out my Mobifier guide down in the link below. It'll be much easier to update than a video guide, so make sure to follow it on Mobifier or simply bookmark it if you're interested in the latest items and builds. Make sure to follow my other social medias as I'll be adding content and updating them soon. I'm Zeus, good luck in your ranked games and I'll see you in the next video.